All right, welcome everybody to a walkthrough video for Nanum 2.0. Excited to get you all started today uh, with Nanum 2.0. So as you can see, uh, this is the very first thing you'll see when you launch into Nanum 2.0. Um, you might have a different, slightly different version. You can click on the I button and you can see uh, more information on the workspace, uh, all of the IT and technical things like which addresses you're connected to, um, including the accounts API, workspace API, and the real-time server address in case you have any issues. Um, and so the first thing, actually, you'll notice that even though we are in the login menu, uh, we see a molecule. Well, that's because we've gotten a lot of feedback that you know sometimes you just don't have an internet connection and you just want to quickly show the power of Nanom and being uh, and being able to see a structure uh, within Nanom. And that's it. Here you go. So we've included a very kind of brief, you know, um, some quick thing, uh, quick structure that allows you to see a uh, small molecule ligand looks like uh, with some surfaces on and some beautiful ribbons. Uh, you can see here uh, the beautiful shadows that we now have in our brand new rendering engine that is available now in Nanum 2.0. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, go ahead and log in. Um, I don't wanna show you my password, so I'll see you on the other side. All right, so we are now in Nanum 2.0 and the first thing you'll notice is that once you log in, uh, you'd no longer see a lobby. And that's because we've now, uh, we no longer have the concept of rooms. And now we have, con uh, it, everything in Nanom 2.0 is surrounded around the idea of workspaces. So the first thing you're gonna go uh, do is like on the left side here, this is the main menu. On the left side here, if you go to the workspaces tab, you'll see all these different workspaces. And so as you can see, I've been using Mara, our uh, large language model um, informatics orchestration platform uh, a lot. So you can see that I've been I've been loading some molecules from there. What I'm going to do is uh, I've, no, I've prepared a structure using Mara uh, and I've made a workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, um, which is the, the first top one you see here for Mara 5 CEO. And so I'm gonna click on that and click on load. And you'll see a audio indicator. And uh, look, it's Steve Gnome. Steve is already here. And you'll notice a couple of things already that is fairly different here. So first off, you don't see a floor where you can teleport around. It's also mixed reality first. So it's no longer VR first and you have to turn on pass through. It's pass through is by default on. Uh, and uh, on top of that, you'll see um, that two things. One is that we see Steve's avatar right there. We have Steve's real life person right there. It's mirrored. But on top of that, if I move the structure, you'll see Steve's blue cones here that are independent from the avatars uh, that you see. And so, you know, the most important thing that we've um, gotten feedback from our users is that that the fact of where exactly, you know, your fellow researchers are pointing at within the structure. And so what we've done is to basically separate uh, or actually duplicate and separate um, where the users are pointing at uh, as well as where the avatars are. So you can still get, you know, kind of the basic body language of, you know, your collaborators and, and things like that. Um, and you can even hear them as well. You know, everything works just like 1.0 in that aspect. But the cool thing is you can move the structure uh, however way you would like, independent of the way that they're seeing it by default. And you get to see where they're pointing at at the same time. Um, and so this is a super powerful thing. And, and it's uh, for Steve, it's exactly the same. So Steve, you can see, uh, where am I pointing at? Uh, yeah, you're pointing at the ligand uh, right here. And so am I. So you know, we can kind of get in there and you know talk about different structures together. Um, talk about you know maybe this a uh, little bit deeper in the pocket. Maybe trying to get some interactions if we change some of the atoms there. Fantastic! So that's a great demo there. Um, the other thing that I also wanted to point out was that when I selected a workspace, it didn't just load the structure. It also included Steve. And that's because Steve also loaded this workspace as well. So basically your data and the room are basically kind of the same thing here. And again, they're known as workspaces. Um, and so I can, if I go to the workspaces tab and if I switch to a different workspace, let's say I switch to uh, Mara 1TYL, I can actually load that space and you'll notice that Steve is no longer in this 
uh, workspace. And that's because I haven't invited him. So let's say that I actually want Steve in here. So there's two ways to do that. I could go to the collaboration tab on the main menu here. And then right now, this is set to private. Now I could change the permissions over here and I could invite somebody via their email that I know, or I could also invite them via this quick eight letter code. So Steve, if you could join another workspace, I'll, I'm about to give you this code. It's K-R-Z-M-F-T-F-B. Perfect. So now I've added uh, Steve as a editor to this workspace. And you can see here, Steve just joined it. And just like before, uh, you'll see Steve's cones and uh, see which part he's pointing at. And so it's as easy as that. This workspace actually has, is, you know, Steve on his end will also see not only Mara 1TYL, but also the Mara 5 CEO as the workspaces that he could be a part of. So Steve, let's switch back to Mar Mara 5 CEO and we'll see you in there. So now you can see kind of, uh, you know, the main representation menu is kind of like the entry menu that we had before. We have the collaboration or the workspace menu, which is uh, where you see the list of workspaces uh, and the set of data and, you know, different kind of, it's kind of like the rooms that you, use, that you might be used to. Um, and the collaboration um, tab over here on the left side shows who is in the room, the status of your mic, different permissions, things like that as well. Um, we kind of briefly touched upon this and I invited um, Steve as a editor here. But if you see on the top corner on the permissions tab, there's actually three different um, statuses for permissions. Uh, one is owner. You know, I'm the owner of this workspace. So that's I'm owner here. I have the right to delete this workspace because I am the owner. But um, editor means that, you know, you can freely edit the workspace as you see fit. And then lastly, we have a viewer mode. And the viewer mode um, allows you to uh, just simply view structures without modifying them. Um, and then lastly, on this tab, on the main menu, on the left side here, you have the settings uh, button. Um, and that uh, controls basically, you know, if you wanted to switch between VR and MR, uh, mute your microphone, those types of things. And then lastly, because of this new workspace paradigm, before we had the load menu where you can load from different uh, various um, databases and websites and whatnot, um, because what we are trying to, uh, you know, the, the workflow that we imagine is the smoothest would be to set up our workspace as well as your data uh, from within the web portal or even Mara uh, and then hopping into VR. And so that's why we've kind of prioritize this workspace flow for now. But in case you wanted to load directly from within VR, we still have the load structure button on the very left. And if you click on there, you can type in a PDB code and you can load in a PDB. And so um, those are kind of the, the basics of this menu right here. Um, and then um, uh, another kind of uh, menu aspect is that uh, just like in 1.0, the left hand has a menu, although it is much more simplified for now. You can mute and unmute yourself. Uh, and then you can also click this button here, which is the kind of like this mini nano button. Um, and that's what instantiates uh, the main menu. So if you ever get lost, or if you don't know where that menu is, you can click on this menu and uh, it, it will um, show that menu right in front of you. Um, another thing that you can see here is that you can see who's in the... Um, in the uh, workspace. And so, of course, Steve is in my workspace and I can see that that is the case. Now, you might have noticed on both on your wrist and as well as the top side uh, top, or top of the main menu that now there are these two icons. Not only can I click on the people that are in the workspace, I can click on this king or this uh, crown icon, um, which is uh, which will activate spotlight mode. Now, spotlight mode has to do with the uh, kind of the dynamic that I previously mentioned, where before um, or now we actually have a separate kind of a positioning for uh, the structured centered positioning of the user's hands, as well as um, kind of the user's hands when it comes to, uh, you know, where the avatars are. And so um, what I can do is that if I click on spotlight mode, then now Steve is going to see exactly the way that I do. And so it might be a little hard to show it from my perspective. So now I'm going to actually, instead of spotlighting to Steve, I'm going to follow Steve and let him spotlight. 
So if I click on his icon, I could do that. Now I'm following it. So now you can see that I'm no longer modifying or changing the structure size or the position. And you can see that um, he's, he's kind of uh, presenting to me exactly the way he wants it to. Um, and so I can kind of, uh, you know, uh, adjust this uh, at any moment. It will snap me out of the follow mode. Um, but uh, again, if I, just in case I lose my place or if I want to follow Steve again, I could either click on his icon or Steve could start spotlighting. So Steve, if you could start spotlighting, perfect. It's going to show me that he's activated spotlight mode. And then now I'm going to be able to, again, see exactly how he's positioning everything because I am following. And this also applies to multiple users. If you have, you know, three or four users or, or what have you, uh, when you activate spotlight mode, it will propagate to all of those users in the workspace um, as well. So you can also follow different users. So let's say that I have, you know, um, somebody else that's in this workspace. I could either choose to follow Steve or this other person. Um, and so I don't necessarily have to always be following a one person. All right, so that's that's the basics of the menus at the top. Now I also want to uh, show the menus at the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, so first off, this I noticed that this structure doesn't have a name here, so I'm going to rename this to B five C E O. There you go. All right, now I want to add a different structure here. Uh, one of my favorites. One. YUI. So now I'm going to load one YUI into this workspace. All right. So what you'll notice now is that unfortunately, uh, these two structures are uh, fully overlapped. Um, now, obviously, that is not, you know, it's not like we're trying to, you know, look at a, uh, identical proteins. They're very different proteins, and it's not like we're trying to do RMSD. So we want to change it. Now, you'll notice that uh, in 1.x, you had to precisely grab exactly on each of those proteins in order to, uh, you know, modify the positions. Uh, what we've done is that we've actually um, made it very easy to intentionally move one or the other protein. And so, on the bottom, you'll see a position molecules toggle. And so if you click on the position molecules toggle, now I can, oh, yep, Steve's already doing it. Um, there you go. I can move the uh, different molecules independent of each other. Um, and so if I, and then if I click on, uh, if I toggle the position molecules, then it, again, it will, you'll also, you'll constantly be grabbing kind of, you know, the entire workspace as opposed to each of these molecules. So hopefully that makes it easier to um, manage the positions of the structures in respect to each other. Great. So this is uh, kind of the basics of all of the different menus. Now let's dive deeper into the representation menu. So one of the first things that you, we see here is that it's kind of similar into the Nano 1.x entry menu. So first off, you know, we no longer need one YUI here. Um, and so I want to simplify, you know, I, I've, I've set up a custom kind of viewing using natural language uh, from Mara in this case. Um, so I want to kind of, you know, set this up to be a little bit more sim simple. And now what we want to do is use these menus to customize the representations further. Now, in, uh, one of the things that is really awesome with Nanom 2.0 is that if you click on this uh, three dot menu on the right here of the entire structure, I could click on reset representations and it will quickly reset the representations to the default representations that Mara or that Nanom 2.0 has, which is based around binding pockets. And so you can see here that uh, the binding pocket already has a surface enabled with the ligand uh, using a, um, uh, wire or stick um, representation. Uh, and on top of that, you can also see some basic chemical interactions. It looks like hydrogen bonds. And so that's how I can quickly change uh, the representations. But now I could go deeper into each of the different parts here. So um, let's say the uh, right now the entire uh, protein is cartoon. So if I click over here, the cartoon toggle is enabled. I can disable this and it will hide it. I can enable it again. And if you click on the color menu on the right side, uh, then you can see the different types of presets that we have, uh, whether that's uh, right now it's just uniform, but we can do a B factor, um, chain instance, 
probably element type is a little bit simpler. Maybe residue type. Uh, residue type, secondary structure, um, and so on and so forth. So you can make this look however uh, you want. Um, but it's not just, of course, cartoons. You can also do um, van der Waals as well. You know, of course, if you want to do the entire protein as ball and stick, you can also do that as well. Um, and if you wanted to do the entire protein surface, you can do that as well. And again, you can change this uh, to whatever color scheme that you want. One tidbit here that you might have noticed um, is that I am, just like Steve, I am on a uh, MetaQuest 3 right now. And some of you might remember that uh, we did not support native cartoon representations in 1.x for proteins. Uh, and that's because we had to send it off to a plugin called Structure Prep, and that's no longer required. And we supported uh, cartoon representations natively within all-in-one headsets like the MetaQuest 3, uh, which is really awesome um, that we don't have to rely on plugins for that anymore. Um, and so what I just did there with the protein I could do with the ligand, uh, you know, let's say I wanted to change this to ball and stick. Um, I could just do that. Um, and again, this is pretty straightforward. Um, but what you'll notice are two new um, kind of submenus within the protein pocket and pocket plus ligand. And so uh, these are kind of, you know, quick ways that you, if you wanted to change the um, representations within the pocket and the pocket with the ligand, uh, these are ways that you can quickly do that now without having to, you know, using the select tool or, you know, using the angstrom tool to, you know, select a, you know, three angstrom uh, radius, you know, that kind of thing. It's all automated using kind of um, the pocket and pocket uh, ligand options that you see here. Now, let's say that we want to show a different representation. What we can do here is in the scenes tab on the right, uh, you'll notice that I could either duplicate the scene or add another scene. For the sake of easiness, I'm just going to go ahead and add this another scene. And uh, now I'm going to rename this scene A and then scene B. So now I'm going to go over to scene B here. And so now you can see that scene B is selected. And then uh, let's say that I want to change the a protein cartoon color uh, to a uniform one, just like we, we had it before. Uh, and then let's say that I wanted to turn off the surface for the pocket on this one. And so now you can see here that this uh, scene, scene B, uh, is different from scene A. And if I can toggle back to scene A, uh, then I, I get exactly what I had before. And the cool, the really cool thing is that the follow and spotlight mode also follows the scenes. So um, I can uh, start the spotlight mode and now Steve will see the scene that I'm in um, once he accepts the spotlight, I think. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And then so now if I go to B, now Steve also sees scene B, right, Steve? Oh, wait, you're not following me. <laughs> there we go. Now yep. I'm following you. All right. Cool. So you see scene B right now? I see scene B. Perfect. Oh, every time you grab it, you unlock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Let me follow yeah, yeah. and not grab. All right. Um, so yeah, that is the basics for Nanom 2.0. We'll be continuing to add many features to Nanom 2.0. And so we'll be making more videos that show you exactly what you can do with Nanom 2.0, as well as the Nanom AI package that includes Mara. So we'll see you in the next episode.